New York and on the new Hot 97 app, Ebro in the Morning. On Hot 97. It's Ebro in the Morning, beautiful Laura Styles, Rosenberg, and we are honored today to have Trayvon Martin's parents, uh, parents Sabrina and Tracy, with us today. Give Thanks it up for one more time. How are you guys? Good. Um, I just want to start this because um, I know you guys have not stopped since uh, you lost your son. And um, every time I see you guys having a conversation, holding, being at a rally, holding fundraising, supporting other parents, um, you know, I just, what you have given to everyone who has either dealt with what you dealt with or feels the pain just because we're black in America and we know what that means and how it's felt for generations, I just want to salute you and say thank you for giving your life to this. Because um, not only did you lose your son, but you guys are reliving that over and over again. So I don't really, other than on behalf of everybody that either sits and talks with you or is going to experience this uh, six-part uh, docu-series, Rest in Power, the Trayvon, it's the Trayvon Martin story, right? Yes. Um, man, just I hope everybody understands what you guys are giving to us, giving to us in this time right now. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, oh. I, I was just saying to them off the air that it's amazing that it's been six years now. And this whole time, you're traveling, you're talking, you're spreading the message. How, at what point did you realize not only do we have this loss to deal with, but wow, this is, we're a part of something bigger now. We just have to step into this role. I think for me, uh, I, the first realization came when uh, we actually got here to New York and did the Million Hoodie Rally at uh, Union Square. Uh, and we realized that um, here it is, a, a, a young 17-year-old African-American child had been killed uh, and, and the city of New York didn't know his name but galvanized around his death and, and, and wanted to make a change. And so when we, when we kind of got thrust into the, uh, into the spotlight of, of making America conscious of the injustices that are occurring, um, I think we embraced it. We knew we had, this was something that we had to do as parents um, to just to keep our, our uh, just to stop the uh, other side from tarnishing our son's name. And so from, from early on, we knew that we were, we were in it uh, for the long haul. Um, Tracy, if you could speak just a little bit louder into the microphone. Um, and put a little bit closer. Sabrina, and for you, when did you know that this was going to be Probably your commitment? Probably about the same time because... Um, we had been, uh, you know, fighting, trying to get an arrest, but it didn't seem like anybody was listening. And people would tell us about, you know, the support that was there, but we didn't, th that was the first time for us to actually see people that was in support of us. Um, when we were here, we did Politics Nation with Reverend Sharpton, and he suggested that we just go out and thank the people at Union Square. And we were like, oh, okay, I was feeling a little sick, and, you know, I was catching a cold. It this is how many weeks later now after? This was uh, this this maybe. This had to be within the first three weeks, first two to three So this weeks. is very early. From a morning standpoint, right. that's very, very early. It was very early. And, um he suggested that um, we just go out and say thank you to the people. And we had no clue, you know, what a, hood, a million hoodie rally was. And so we went out, you know, because he encouraged us to. We went out, and there were thousands and thousands and thousands of people out there. And we were like, you know, we were shocked that so many people were concerned about it because our focus has always been Trayvon, Trayvon, Trayvon. But then when we seen so many people, like, you know, really coming together and uniting and saying, this is wrong. You know, what is be happening right now is wrong. How could an unarmed teen um, be shot and killed and nobody is being arrested? You had this 28-year-old man with a loaded gun following, chasing, pursuing, and shooting and killing him. And they and knew And being who told did to it. stand down and being told multiple times to not do anything. Right, absolutely. And, and and still, it just, all the pieces were there, but then it was something about it that they would not arrest this guy. And it was, at that time, the Stand Your Ground law. And so, um, you know, when we went out to Union Square to thank the people, that was the first time that we actually knew that other people cared about what happened with Trayvon. How hard is it, um, you know, raising a black man in America, right? Um, you know, because this isn't something that, um, for for black people is a new fear of being characterized by the cops in a certain way, of being 
characterized by society in a certain way, of being characterized as older than you actually are, which we've mm -hmm. seen in cases, being characterized as the aggressor. This is textbook America, right, for as us. As being suspicious. As being suspicious all the time. Assuming that you're doing something wrong when you're really not, you're only walking, you know, mm -hmm. all the driving, you know. Had you had conversations with your son? Well, you know, we actually, we actually, uh, at, an early, at an early stage in, in, in our kids' lives, we actually had them go to a camp where they where they uh, was exposed to conflict or resolution, and so they knew the uh, how how to de-escalate a situation. They knew how to uh, talk talk with adults and handle themselves as young young people uh, should handle themselves. So we did have com that conversation with with our kids um, because of the social justice issues that had been plaguing our country before Trayvon. That's right. That's right. You know we. Uh, there's a misconception with with the blind part of America that says this is just now occurring. This has been happening for years, and it'll continue generations to for generations. Mm -hmm. And so, I, I think the tie-in with Trayvon, with, with with you know the tie-in is this civil rights movement that spark that sparking now with the younger people. Um, this happened to Emmett Till, and then you had that space from Emmett Till to Trayvon Martin. Now we're in a situation where um, the acquittal of the killer of our son has allowed white supremacists to feel as though they can go out on a daily basis, get into a confrontation with, with, with children or unarmed young black men, shoot and kill them, and said that they were standing their ground. It just happened again in Florida. It just happened again in yeah. Florida with yeah, the guy who's a documented yeah. racist who harasses people, got into it with a, a mother and a right. child. Somebody stepped in. He kills yeah. the person that was helping. It happened to a, a, a white guy, actually, who stepped in to help somebody. He got killed, too, and these killers are getting off, and people, the NRA and these other organizations are still funding uh, people and the confusion around gun rights laws, the stand your ground law in Florida. Are you guys um, active still in bringing this law also and, and addressing the stand your ground law as well in Florida? Absolutely. We continue to work with the legislators um, in Florida to try to make change, you know, to try to get things amended. It's so hard when other people on the side of you know, the, the, the peace line um, decides that they want to sell more guns and they want to continue this law because they want to sell more guns. It's about the economy, you know. It's about, about selling, selling guns. But to us, it's about right and wrong. And I don't think it's going to be any change until somebody in their family gets killed and somebody else uses that stand-your-ground law. Then they'll understand how wrong it is. Have At, at any point, have you guys been able to... Um, sort of separate and mourn separately from the cause around it? I don't know if that makes sense. Or is it all completely tied together it's all the all time? It's all tied together. It's yeah. absolutely all tied together. Um, one of the things early on is I can definitely say that um, um, as I helped other mothers, as we reached out to other families, because we would go from different cities and, you know, speak to the families of, you know, Tracy would speak to the fathers and I would speak to the mothers and we would talk to those families and try to encourage them. Um, and I think that took away from the, the, the hardcore um, grie grieving that we were doing. The, you know, you, you're going to grieve. I'm going to grieve the rest of my life. You know, it's, it's like a valuable piece of me is missing and I have to live without that whatever valuable piece it is. And that valuable piece is Trayvon. So every day I wake up, I have to think about my son that's not here. You know, and a lot of people don't understand that. And, it, you know, I know military people have PTSD, but I don't even know what you call this pain that you carry around every day. Um, I absolutely still have um, good days and bad days. You know, during my bad days, I try to stay home. Um, because I don't need to be around people. I need to just go ahead and grieve and just go ahead and cry. And, you know, I have those days. But I think um, for the most part, this is not something people should um, look at and say, okay, well, that happened to this family over here. They should look at the, this family and say, well, this happened to them. I don't want this to happen to me. Let me do something now so that I can try to prevent this from happening to other families. I know that um, I know you guys got a lot of offers uh, and people wanting to to produce the film and the series. What was it about Jay Z that made you trust in telling the story that you guys, the way you guys wanted it to be told? 
one of the things I always say is that, um, you know, Jay-Z was the person that came to the table, but who we met with was Sean Carter. It was a different person. He's more business. He he, he talks as a father, a husband, a, a son-in-law. He, he It's a different type of person that comes to the table when you're doing business. It's not the Jay-Z that I go to the concert hold that I see on, 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 you know, at his concerts and on TV and stuff like that. It's not the same person, and a lot of people don't understand that until they do business with him but the business Sean Carter came to our meeting and he expressed to us that that was something that he really wanted to do um, the people that we selected to uh, to kind of document this uh, because it came directly from the book the rest in power book but the people that we got were the people that we thought was the best fit for us because we wanted to tell our story in real time. We wanted to tell our tragedy and let people know that this this is coming from the parents of. We didn't want anybody else to try to water it down. It's very hard to look at. It's very, very difficult. It's in depth. You know, it, you will have a hard time looking at it, it's, you know. Have you gotten accustomed to watching through it? Because I'm sure you've had to see it in different stages. Once. It, it, it's, it's, it's hard it's for me to watch. look at. It's a, it's a tough, tough watch. watch. Did your other kids watch it? Uh, uh, Var Javaris no. only watched once. One. It's, it's a tough watch. It's a lot, I'm sure. Because it's recanting, recanting uh, your life's tragedy. Yeah, I can't so, imagine. You know, it's, even though it's the loss of our son, but it's still our life's tragedy. Mm -hmm. And it's America tragedy. Um, this it's Sad to say, this is going on across the country, and and we view it for for, for you, for many of you, it's a story. But for us, this is our lifestyle. Real life. So, and so to, to live through it day in, day out, and then... Uh, continue to recant it or retell it or watch it on, on TV. It's troubling, um, knowing that nothing that we say or do in interviews or on the screen will bring back Trayvon, but it's what we can do moving forward to help save a lot of uh, a lot of our other young brothers and sisters out there. Um, for the audience, just know if you don't, um, both Sabrina and Tracy they put together a book uh, last year. Was it came out? Yes. Uh, Rest in Power: The Enduring Life of Trayvon Martin. Um, but the the internet says that there's other aspects of another book um, that was a suspicious nation. Is that um, that's from that's, the attorney yeah. uh, Bloom, Lisa Bloom. Lisa Bloom. And yeah. so she wrote a book, "Suspicious Nation: The Inside Story of Trayvon Martin and Justice, and Why We Continue to Repeat It." Well, that's one of the reasons what you we know made us decide to do the docu series so and write our own book. Material. Yeah. was because there was so much other material out there. There was so many other people giving their take, and, and they wanted to... And making um, money off Trayvon. Yeah, and, and, and wanted to do their reviews and, and, and make comments and stuff, and they never met Trayvon. And so we thought that it was best for us to tell. We speak for Trayvon. We knew Trayvon. We know Trayvon. We, we can tell you Trayvon's ins and outs, you know. And even the death of Trayvon has not separated us from the love that we have for Trayvon. Of course so not. when people write, like, all of these different things about who Trayvon was, was they didn't even know him. They didn't even, they never met him. So she's giving you her point of view from a, a, an attorney. And she's, you know, people have been given their point of view from uh, the jury process and from the rallies and different things. We are giving you the parents' point of view and how we felt and how everything, you know, impacted us, not only us, but our community, our families, our friends, and, and, it, and even the, you know, people at large, you know, the supporters. The, um, the, the death of your son, the murder of your son sparked the Black Lives Matter movement. Right. That was the moment that people took to Facebook. Um, we've interviewed people who were responsible for starting that conversation around that moment, how jarring it was to hear um, the story of a of a young man being murdered. He didn't have a weapon. And why, it, it, you know, throughout my life, I've heard these stories. Right. Um, and. The the naysayers in society of American society, right, who want to believe that nothing ever goes wrong, America always gets it right, this could never happen, you know, and I'm sure you guys heard all of those stories many times and we continue to hear them. Oh, yeah. um, has any parents or people that you didn't expect 
to change their tune or to understand and be more enlightened because of your experience? Have you come across those parents or those individuals? I think, you know, through, since, since uh, we'll, go, we'll go back to the release of the book, since the book and now the docuseries has, has uh, been, been produced, um, you, you have people that have read the book and and now they're more open to having that dialogue about racism in in America, mm. and that um, the, that society does thrive on racism, and that there are people that are are willing to stay separate, uh, that don't want diversity at all. And so, if you read the book, uh, you'll see it through a parent's perspective, and you'll understand that um, that what was done was wrong. And so when when now with the docu series being added on, you'll have people that are more acceptive of the the hard hard cold facts that this was a this was a uh, a senseless killing, this was a, an injust, and it's happening across our country. And so, you know, they they can sit back in the little pockets of America and say racism don't don't exist, but we know you know on a day in day out basis that racism is alive and well. Did you uh? Did you ever talk to anyone with any relationship, either fa familial or just personal, with George Zimmerman, who, who said anything to you guys? Um, apologized, said he doesn't represent our family. The you know anything like that? No, no, no one came forward and did that. Well, some of the filmmakers probably did. They reached out to his family, and I don't know if they did. You know how much talking they did, but they did reach out to his family. Are any of them Which in is, the docu series? Are any no. of the not family my, members no. in? No, Zimmerman. Yeah, not to my knowledge. But reached out to stop the the production of the film or in support? Because I heard that there was a lot of issues like on his side trying to meddle and trying to yeah, stop uh, some of the production. Well, of course, you know, people don't want to read the truth revealed anyway. Yeah. So. He had started stalking... Uh, one of the producers and the investigators, right. and, and so wait, George just, Zimmerman, yes, yeah, so is that, still out here moving yeah, around like so that. Just shows like it's safe for him, man. That just shows how you know. That just shows how society works, and that that you know here's a, a known killer, um, and he moves when he want to move, and he moves in the area that he wants to move in. Don't get it. Don't get it twisted. He's not gonna move in society where society can see him. You know, he'll move in his little pockets, and he'll threaten the people that he want to threaten. But, you know, at the end of the day, um, this is, you know, the state of Florida is having a repercussion behind this because they're, you know, now America is pointing the finger and saying the judicial system in Florida is definitely broke, and this is a product of, of the judicial system of letting the man be an acquitted of a murder. And, and so now, now um, society is saying state of Florida deal with it. Talk to me. Um, sir, um, as a father, because um, as I hear you talk through this, many times I'm like, I don't know how Tracy does it. I don't know how Trayvon's dad does it. Talking through this, staying peaceful, staying calm, at least it's tough. It's tough, at least man. to us. Oh, yeah, I would love to hear spiritually and like uh, what type of yoga, meditation. I don't know what you're doing, but we need we need because your ability to stay focused and calm is I I'm. It's yeah, and I think you know it's just the love of my love of my child, man. You know, understanding that um, at the end of the day, if I go out and and, and put myself in a, a situation whereas um, I, I take myself away from my family now, I think the work that we've done uh, would have been all for nothing. And mm -hmm. so I just continue to think about the love that I have for my son and and the love that I have for my other children. And that you know, I'm here for a purpose, man. And I understand that, you know, that is is bigger than my son. Now it's about saving a lot of other children's lives. And so, uh, I, you know, many people have told me uh, before that we we are the voice of the black community when it comes to social justice issues. And and so, uh, a lot of I understand that a lot of people lean on us, lean towards us for guidance and and a little understanding. And so. Um, you know, we just keep pushing forward with the work. And Sabrina, for you, I'm sure, like you said earlier, you have good days and bad days. But, you know, for parents um, that may not be able to sit down and talk with y'all but have, you know, lost a child in similar fashion to, you know, this kind of, I guess, uh, unforgiving 
society that we have in many too many cases with black people. What what advice do you have for moms out there coping? Um, I, I usually tell moms to um, some surround themselves with positive people. You know, it, it has a lot to do with your attitude before this happens as well. You know, um, trials and tribulations don't build character. It reveals it. And so a lot of times it's really revealing who you really are and how strong you really are. A lot of people don't realize how strong they really are until they actually go through the valley. You know, you when, you, when you're doing good and everything is fine, okay, you really don't have to be strong. But when things happen like this, you have to be strong, and it really tests your... Um, you know, your womanhood, your manhood, it really tests those those characteristics within you. But um, I've always had people around me that were really positive. You know, I just didn't want to hear the negative stuff. I wouldn't even watch the news a lot of times because I didn't want to hear people saying negative stuff about my son because they didn't know who he was. And so um, I, I kept busy. I stay busy, you know, and another thing, I stay focused on what I'm doing. I make sure that um, I'm trying to help somebody else, and that, that really makes a big difference. And I tell my moms that now, like, you know, when you help other mo- mothers, it really takes the pressure off of what you're going through. Mm-hmm. You don't forget it. You're never going to forget it, but it really takes the pressure off it the more you do for other people. And so that's just how I live my life, and, you know, I don't have any regrets. You know, I'm not um, – I'm not at the stage where I should be forgiving. When I get there, I get there. I'm not there yet. Um, but by the same token, I just feel like God is going to deal with what he's done. Um, a Zimmerman killed a, a senseless child through innocent blood is on his hands. He has to deal with that. I don't have to deal with that because my son didn't shoot and kill anyone. And so I just keep thinking about that. you know. And I know every child needs their parents. They need their mother. They need their father. And Trayvon didn't have an opportunity to fully experience his life, you know, and somebody has to account for that. Somebody has to account for every tear that I cry. How is, how has this entire experience, um, affected, uh, you two's relationship? We've always had a, a great relationship. Um, <laughs> some relationships, you know, I mean, we understood. Sabrina disagrees. We, under- we are great relationship, <laughs> by the way. Sidebar. We always <laughs> But, you know, we always had a good relationship, man. We remain close. Um, uh, one thing about it, we even through our trials and tribulations and through our um, through our divorce, the kids didn't know that we were divorced, mm. and so we kind of kept that between us because we knew that we had to raise our children, and so I, I, and we co-parented. Uh, we still co-parent uh, well, and you know, she thinks she. Well, I'm going to tell boss. the truth. I'm glad y'all <laughs> asked that question. Oh Lord. <laughs> <laughs> You're not turning up on him no. today. Uh, That's not what this is about. You know, it's we, not what we, we here for. We always actually got along. So on it, the next episode of you, bro, in the morning, <laughs> Trayvon's parents want to tell us. No. <laughs> but um, we've always got along. We always had a civilized relationship. And so um, even, you know, after we got divorced, we still had a civilized relationship. So, you know, that's just my baby daddy. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys also, though, have, you know, in work, you guys are working on something outside of parenting now together which is important to a greater community so i'm sure that you know you guys are spending more time together in you know traveling and having convo and planning and um these things um do you guys um after this moment the docuseries is out now people could go watch it um you guys going around and having these conversations um you know unfortunately um there's i'm sure going to be more police killings there's going to be more injustice, right? I mean, it's not something that changes overnight. We have to. We are right now as a country being uh, uh, confronted with arguably one of the greatest crossroads, I think, in the history of the country, right? We have bad leadership that's not bringing Definitely. people together, right? right. Um, you have uh, racism, whether it's against black folks, it's also against Muslims, it's also against Jewish people, it's also, uh, you know, uh, women, against women, gays. gays. Yeah. I, I mean, it's just, it's all, so we're right now, you know, at that moment. And, you know, um, because of the loss of your son, it activated everyone where everyone is prepared for activism in some way, shape or form. Right. Um, are you guys going to continue to be at the forefront? Is this something that you, you know, cause I know this is weighing on your energy and your spirit. How do you it's, it's 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 a it's nonstop, man. You know, we we took a vow that um, we would, you know, we would 
uphold the legacy and the name of Trayvon Martin, and it don't stop at the end of the docu series because the killings don't stop. The the uh, violence associated with racism is not gonna stop, and so we're in it for the long haul. You know, it's, it's you know we didn't ask to be activists. You know, we were kind of thrust into this this situation, and so being thrust into the situation, you still want to go out and give it 110 uh, percent because the things, the our actions, the things what we say or what we do uh, can make a difference. It can make a difference. You know, it makes a difference in society. It makes a difference in our communities. It, di- it makes a difference uh, across the country, and so I, I think it's real important that that um, what we do now, our, our activism. Opens opens doors or open other avenues where people are are not afraid to speak up. People are not afraid to uh, uh, um, actually invoke their rights as humans right. to to you know to go out and do what they're supposed to do to make a change. How does all of this affect your other children? Not only did they lose a brother, but the attention on you as a family is completely different and now you know obviously we're getting the story tonight at 10 p.m for the first time but how does it affect your your other children when they're in school or just you know every day well i mean for, for my other children uh, uh for javaris and and demetrius and tyler and takira you know they kind of put themselves in a situation whereas um they kind of they're sheltered you know they're afraid. They're afraid, kind of afraid of of being out in the public. You know they they're not media ready. They won't, they don't want to be in the media, uh, so they shy away from the media. And uh, I've tried to do my part in keeping them away from uh, being exposed to all the negativity that's associated um, with being in the right. in the news. And so, um, for the most part, you want you you still want your children to live their normal lives. Be you know be active in sports, um, have friends, but be cautious, be careful when you're out there because uh, we don't, you know, I, I don't think I can uh, live through another uh, loss. And so, you know, for my kids, I, I just, you know, I try to tell them just stay positive, you know, do, do uh, live your life, but stay positive at the same time. Um. I just want to say thank you again for your your time, your energy, and sharing with us, and continuing to go around and be, you know, parents that are helping other parents and just helping us all, you know, deal with everything that we're seeing every day, whether it's on social media or in real life. So, it just thank the, you the, very much. Well, yeah, well, I, I I echo the same sentiment. And just um, when you know anyone who's experienced a tragedy of losing a child. It's an unbelievable undertaking to live life again for parents. So for you guys to do that and then continue to give what you're doing, it's 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 uh, incredibly honorable and it's appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you guys. Thank we'll you be watching guys. tonight, 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, and that's on BET and yes, Paramount. And Paramount. Paramount, six parts, so tonight's part one. Yep. We'll get that's part right. one. Thank you guys very Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you yeah.